skidding, escaping, runaway excursion, crashing. What if your plane doesn't stop? These are the last things that you want to happen in your flights. Don't worry, aviation experts have got us all covered with their insane plane stopping technique, along with many other technological advancements. Traffic Control and Collision Avoidance System Advanced With the continuously increasing air traffic, there is an increasing threat of the planes colliding with each other too. But even with more than 7,000 planes taking off in the air at once and sometimes passing over one another, with the minimum distance of 1,000 feet, we rarely see any of them colliding with each other. So what prevents them from bumping into each other? The answer is this, Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System, specifically designed to prevent mid-air plane collisions. Looking parallel to the Air Traffic Controller System, operating on ground TCAS operates differently than the ATC. The first generation introduced in the year 1981 could only operate within the plane vicinity, thus providing the pilot with the information on the planes flying in the same altitude or direction. 11 o'clock, same altitude, one mile. The second generation, which was actually the updated version of the previous one, not only notified the pilot of the upcoming traffic, but also provided it with resolution advice, which were actually the precise guidelines directing the pilot about the next step, usually directing the pilot to accelerate, climb, or adjust the vertical speed of the plane. I'm now on. And by predicting the incoming crash, it can warn the people of the mid-air collision by estimating the speed and altitude using the transponder signals of the nearby plane. So, where a simple miscommunication with the ATC can result in the collision, TCAS makes sure the plane lands safely on its desired destination. After ensuring a safe flight, the next challenge for a pilot is to approach the runway for the landing phase. Because runway excursions during the landing phase represent one of the major categories of accidents in air transports. But Airbus technological invention prevents such incidents. But the runway safety suit ensures a safe landing. It starts with a warning function, row, that becomes active at 500 feet and alerts the crew during the approach that the runway might be too short to land safely and incites the flight crew to perform a go-round. After getting a green signal, aircraft is all set to land. But the risk is still there, so RO remains active until the transition to ROP. ROP becomes active on the ground and remains active until the taxiing speed. It uses the aircraft's current deceleration and aircraft characteristics to determine where the aircraft can safely stop on the runway. Once the risk is no longer there, all alerts are canceled as ROP is reversible. EMIS But even these two working together cannot guarantee a hustle-free landing. So when they fail to stop the plane on the runway and the plane is destined to overshoot the landing area, EMIS hits the plane's tires, shortened for Engineered Material Arresting System. It is actually an arrestor bed, strategically developed to mitigate the runway overruns. Located beyond the far end of a runway, this arrestor bed assures the safe takeoff and landing of the plane. It all started back in February 1984, when our U.S. Flight 901's late touchdown on the runway caused it to exceed the expected landing area. So, the Federal Aviation Authority, FAA, decided to make an arrestor for the plane to reduce its speed during an overshoot of runway, initiating an experiment with the Naval Engineering Center. The FAA experimented with soft ground materials using phenolic foams at first for measuring theoretical distances required to stop the plane. They finally installed a prototype arrestor bed at the New York airport in 1989. The 500 feet wide arrestor bed is made of the crushable concrete and is installed on the airports with two different methods. First one, it's quite simple as they simply put the mass produced blocks on the runway. But it does not work for bigger projects. 
and for that the engineers have to prepare the grounds. And then the small rocks are showered into the separated segments, which are then layered with concrete. But when hit by the plane's tires and increasing the friction, these concreted rocks are easily crushed and cause the plane accelerating at the speed of 80 miles per hour to reduce speed and eventually stop. Friction Measuring System Even after so many safety measurements, accidents can still happen. Runway excursions involve many factors, ranging from unstable approaches to the condition of the runway. Although absolute training for pilots is also very necessary, sometimes it depends on the force that resists a relative movement between tires and the runway. If you have ever traveled in a plane, you must have felt that funny bump when the plane touched down at the end of the journey. But have you ever wondered how plane tires handle all that stress and pressure? Although the tires are specially designed, sometimes all it matters is the friction. To test runway surface friction, continuous friction measurement equipment is used. This is a dynamic friction tester that creates and measures the skid resistance of a tire towing across the runway surface. This completely self-contained machine has a nozzle that shoots out a specific amount of water that is optimally suited for both summer and winter testing. The test is specifically repeated on the groove surface. Grooves Here you must be thinking about what a groove surface is. As we all know that rough surfaces have more friction than smooth surfaces, and liquids such as oil or water are the major factors to reduce the effect of friction, which can result in this, or maybe this. But it is obvious that when you are running a vehicle on a wet surface, you may lose control, which is called hydroplaning. Due to this, sliding across the runway becomes difficult for an aircraft. To avoid such aviation tragedies, groove surfaces are used. Stretching horizontally across the runway, a grooved pavement has discrete channels for water to escape, helping eliminate standing water. Besides this, grooves also help restore tire friction coefficients on wet pavement. The grooves are cut transversely to the direction of an airplane travel direction and are usually continuous to dry pavement lines for the entire length of the runway. When it comes to aviation safety, more is less. Even after measuring friction or building grooves, it is important to observe the performance of pavement under different circumstances. To evaluate the full-scale constructive pavements in an accelerated manner, APT is used. Accelerated pavement testing utilizes special full-scale mobile or fixed testing apparatus to simulate different effects in a shorter time period. It is meant to provide results from full-scale constructed pavements and loading, but with damage accelerated through control of loading and environmental control to obtain results in weeks and months rather than the years and decades necessary to complete long-term monitoring. Accelerated pavement testing can provide expedited feedback on new designs and materials for the road. Destructive Pavement Testing No matter how similar the airfields may look, every base is different, and sometimes it is necessary to evaluate the materials used in the pavement to identify defects before they become worse. Destructive testing aims to deform or destroy a material to analyze its point of failure. This involves the collecting of samples from the surface to determine the thickness layers in the pavement. A sharpened pipe mounted on the back of a truck is driven through the surface, and after coring deeper, the obtained samples are used to build a complete soil profile. Falling Weight Deflectometer But this is not ended yet, as there is another way to measure the durability of a runway. After all, the pavement of asphalt and concrete has to bear the pressure from this to this. Testing involves subjecting the pavement surface to a load pulse that simulates the load produced by a rolling vehicle wheel. The load pulse is produced by dropping a large weight onto a buffer, which shapes the pulse 
and then transmitted to the pavement through a circular load plate. This is done through the falling weight deflectometer, which provides a rapid and cost-effective means of measuring the response of pavements to a dynamic load. Here comes the trickiest part, the runway surface. Because the airplane's safe landing and takeoff are directly impacted by the friction produced in the pavements, aviation authorities use different tools to reduce the faults in the pavements, which eventually reduces the runway excursions. The key tool is the Hydro Timer, a tool specifically designed to measure the smoothness of the surface. And they do it by pouring water on the surface. Therefore, the longer it takes for the water to drain into the side channels on the runway, the smoother the surface is believed to be. So, now we know that a perfectly smooth surface is not what an airplane dreams of. That's when the Skidobrator joins the game. Because when the airport ramp is open to different weather conditions, it needs to roughen up. So, the Skidobrator rehabilitated the pavement. In other words, it simply makes the runway landable for the aircrafts. Another thing which makes the runway surface smooth is the rubber that is produced by the plane itself. And not a small amount, but upon landing, each tire produces up to one and a half pounds and leaves it on the surface. So, it means an usual landing plane leaves nine pounds of rubber to the runway. So to remove this massive amount of rubber, the aviation workers use high quality trucks, which in simple words, works as giant scrubbers. Blasting the surface with hot water, the truck then uses hard brushes to remove the rubber layering. Snow Removal And while we are on the subject of removing substance from the runways, let's talk about the snow removal process. So, when tons and tons of snow falls from the skies, the aviation team buckled up to deal with the 28 million square feet runway covered in piles of snow. And for this purpose, they use 23 vehicles of six different types, including plows, de-icers, and brooms, closing the runways for only 20 minutes to clear away all the snow before the plane lands there. Runway Survey Robot And lastly, the runway undergoes an automated inspection tool, a survey robot, which inspects and detects both surface and subsurface defects and can predict upcoming maintenance to alert the APE team, which consists of the airfield pavement evaluation workers and reduces the costly repairs and alignment issues. Now, look at this jumbo, destroying a section of prepared terrain adjacent to the runway. Luckily, this was just a section because in the worst case, it may end up like this. But how terrain affects the rigid metallic body that in turn causes a risk in a safe flight, depending upon the direction and speed of the wind, its interaction with the terrain can lead to updrafts, downdrafts, and turbulence, which may exceed aircraft limitations or performance capability. But to overcome these risks during a flight, terrain detecting system is used. When an aircraft approaches the ground surface or ocean surface in excess of a specific rate, the system compares the aircraft's location and topographic data obtained from satellites and warns the pilot of danger if the aircraft is flying into an obstacle. This is an EGPWS system that provides terrain alerting and display functions with additional features. The EGPWS uses aircraft inputs, including geographic position, attitude, altitude, ground speed, vertical speed, and glide slope deviation. Alerts are either provided by a visual light annunciation or by a warning audio. Terrain ahead, pull up. The warning is sometimes displayed on the weather radar indicator or sometimes on the EGPWS display. Hydraulic system and landing gear. Initially, planes were completely controlled by the pilots, but gradually with the growing sizes of planes, the pilots' responsibilities grew along it, and completely operating a larger plane was almost impossible for the pilot. Therefore, numerous techniques were adopted by the engineers, one of which was the hydraulic systems, which uses the pressurized fluid to operate the landing and the nose gear as well. 
But that's just the case in smaller airplanes, because hydraulic systems operate a little differently in larger aircrafts, being the central support system of a plane, which assists it during takeoff, landing, and taxing. The landing gear paired with the hydraulic-powered system, they make the best duo. But not just the landing gear, but in bigger planes. Most of the plane is powered by the system, especially the flight control. So a little malfunction can severely affect the operation of the airplane, and sometimes can create strange noises too, which when avoided can lead to risky landings. Therefore, the hydraulic-powered controls of the aircraft are closely examined and tested before scheduling its flight. And now let us move on to our subscriber pick of the day. This image was sent to us by a subscriber. Similarly, if you ever wish to know more about an image you come across, just send it to us. Who knows? We might even feature it in one of our videos. Already discussed the EMUS in the beginning of the video, let me brief you about its working first. So, EMUS is basically a runway excursion avoiding path that is installed at each end of the pavement and is made of the crushable rocks that when the wheels of the aircraft causes it to stop. The picture you are seeing right now is from the runway climax that happened on the 27th of October 2016, when the Boeing 737 carrying Governor Mike Pence missed the runway's ending. The flight was delayed at first considering the predicted bad weather and was given the permission to fly a little later than its scheduled timing when it took off after and was expected to safely land on the JFK airport. The plane's hydraulic system refused to cooperate with the pilot, thus not stopping at any cost when the airplane was in grave danger. The pilot, analyzing the situation and continuously trying to make it stop, somehow, eventually turned the plane toward the concrete tiles placed beyond the runway and destroyed the cemented plates with the wheels of the plane, eventually forcing it to stop. Luckily, even after a disastrous landing, the governor, along with the other passengers, made it out unscathed. According to the investigators, if it was not for the EMUS installed there, the plane's ending could have been the worst. See you next time!